This is a live shot from our amazing photographer this morning, a live look, tight shot of the moon. That was a great shot. Paul, thank you very much for that. You we're on I-215 in the Holiday area, just pulled over about five minutes ago. People, slow down this morning. Here's why, follow with me. We've got this tire that is that belongs to this car over here. We're scattered debris just lays right ahead of the car. The trooper on scene telling me that they literally hit the barrier and flipped over. You can see the result of the damage over here. But check out the car missing its tire. Several, a lot of the debris just having fallen out of the car onto the side of the road. Traffic getting by at this point very slowly right now as plows have also tried to make their way through this area. Jenny, unbelievable. Best word to describe the situation. I just spoke with the police over there. You can see crews have just shown up. He tells me that they don't have enough resources and that westbound traffic doesn't have as much water as eastbound. So I thought, let's measure it. Take a look below me. We're talking maybe six inches on the eastbound side and over on the westbound side, we're talking four. I don't care if it's one inch or one foot of water, turn around, don't drown. Take a look behind us. We're literally soaked in water. My feet are being covered in this flood water right here. Very loud as traffic is trying to make their way through westbound. This is a very dangerous and difficult situation to navigate, especially for this guy over here to my left, who is still stuck one hour later after being caught in this eastbound flood water. He says he's still waiting on a tow truck over there. It looks like they are either back in their car or have since left the scene. Luckily, crews now on scene as of within the last five minutes or so. Well, the line is actually starting to pick up. If you take a look over my shoulder, you're gonna see kind of the long line as you uh, as it kind of ropes through and then starts to make its way back there. You know, in fact, let's, let's head downstairs. I'll show you what's going on over here as people are checking in. Just a reminder, make sure that you have your boarding pass with you um, before you even get to the airport. Either download it on your phone using um, your airline's app or make sure you have it printed out because that's going to save you a ton of time. That's something that they're encouraging everyone to do this year. All right, so, so from a lower level standpoint, you're going to see what we're seeing here. A live look at the lines. People are apparently getting through the line in about 10 to 15 minutes. So as we wait, make our way down this way, you'll see... The line is definitely growing. Check this out. It's starting to kind of uh, make its way kind of around there. How was that dog? Um, it tried to rip my entire shoulder off, as you can see. After I was laying on the ground with my hands up, uh, it ran around me and then I believe one of these officers gave it a command to try and kill me, I think. I don't know. Ow! Ow! It, uh. This this is not justice, though. I've done nothing wrong for you to put me in here and take me to jail. Uh. You, you, we didn't make you take your clothes off. We weren't even here, then. Stop! Uh. Bible! And the Bible says that Lucifer rises into heaven and calls the throne to come angel of life. It's boarded up, the spot where there was once a glass door, a door which shattered and led to a chain of events. That's 25-year-old Joshua Harvey entering Arvis Bank downtown and about to be tased. Tase him, tase him, tase him, tase him. At what point is it not excessive? That is a question that's being raised as various people watch the multiple tasings. Put your hands behind your back! Put your hands behind your back! How is he gonna put his hands behind his back? Social activist James Johnson seeing the video for the first time with us. He's down and they tase him again. How's he gonna roll over? He's tased. They are still tasing. And he's down. How's he a threat? It was constant. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Mark Lewis says he's spoken to Joshua Harvey's mother, who has since retained an attorney. Just zap him when he doesn't turn over. Zap him when he doesn't do when he doesn't follow the commands. Um, to me, that's excessive. For Johnson, the father of a 17-year-old son, the incident speaks to a larger societal concern. I said, son, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, dad, I just want to be alive. I didn't see it. I didn't allow him to see me cry right then, bro. But later that night, in my little secret closet, I had, some, I had to share tears before Almighty God. Questions over use of force and the fine balance between protecting an officer 
and protecting the public. So you have to keep in mind your job as an officer is to preserve life, all life, not just your life. We've been having peaceful protests. We've been having peaceful rallies. But at any moment, Tulsa can be Ferguson. Tulsa can be Baltimore. There were plenty of hugs at the airport this afternoon, family members gathering together to welcome back a loved one whose flight home was long overdue. 73 years overdue. We're just glad to get him home. Now 77, Mickey Brooks was just four years old when her uncle went away to war. The night before he left, he was at our house and he made me and my two sisters a rattle out of a milk can with the marbles in it. So I still have mine, 73 years old. It was during the Battle of the Bulge that Private First Class Oscar Eugene Sappington was killed in action. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't think that they were find him. 88-year-old Virgil is Oscar's cousin and remembers the letters from the front. One time he wrote, he was in a foxhole writing a letter and he, he said it took him uh, a whole day to write it because the bullets were going over their heads. His remains were initially found in 1947, but with no ID. He was buried in a grave in Belgium, and through DNA, they uh, identified his remains and matched him with our cousin that lives in Broken Arrow. That 19-year-old private would now be 92. And today, when his plane arrived at Tulsa International, the name on the side of the aircraft became much more than just the name of an airline. It was a bright, bold statement of fact about a man whose sacrifice was never forgotten and that respect never ages. And I just thank God that he's with us now. We give him a proper burial. Bert Mumolo tells us Channel 8. Hey Paul, tell me, what are the road conditions like? We can see a little bit what you're experiencing in downtown Price, but what has your experience been like driving in this? Hey Holly, good morning. Um, Mike's um, coming up the canyon was pretty decent until we got to a higher elevation. It was about seven degrees and it was really snow packed and icy in some spots. The left lane was a lot worse than the right lane, but once I got out of the canyon and came down into Price, the roads are a little snow packed. It's not snowing at all right now, so um, conditions look pretty good here right now. Yeah, we can see some of that snow on the roads there in downtown Price. And Paul, you did say the plows are out, right? Yeah, I have seen UDOT uh, through the canyons, and I have seen snow plows here in downtown Price. Okay, Paul Howard, our photographer in the 2 News Mobile Weather Lab. Paul, thanks so much. We'll check back in with him in just a little bit. And Welcome back. Quarter past seven now. And, uh, yeah, we've had a messy commute, so messy that we have to put some uh, washer fluid in <laughs> the 2 there News we Mobile Weather Lab right now, so we're working on that. Paul's popping the hood there. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> don't want to run out or you have mud on your windshield. So allow for extra time maybe to put in fluid or uh, scrape ice off your windshield. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> Good reminder right there. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Paul is such a hard worker. Good job, Paul.